What's up, guys? It's your boy once again with another episode of Fullery. All right, so y'all got to help me out. Y'all let me know. Y'all, I need your help. I need your help. We have another story about someone about to be kidnapped. All right. This young lady says a Lyft driver tried to snatch her up. And she did the G.I. Jane thing and jumped out the car, did the roll, got up, and ran. Now, the whole thing sounds all heroic, but there are some things in this story that just don't sound right. I mean, it just don't. I'm sorry, it just don't. So, allegedly, this happened to this young lady, and she's telling her story. So... Y'all buckle in, make sure I hit that subscribe, like, and share, and um, just enjoy the story, man. And y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think as it goes. Let's get it. Hey guys, so I'm making this video to spread awareness. I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Yesterday, I almost died jumping out of a moving lift because the lift driver was trying to kidnap me. So I work at the Clinton Outlets in Connecticut. If you live in Connecticut, you know the Clinton Outlets is exit 63. Right. I live in New Haven, Connecticut, which is about 30, 30 minute rise. When I got a female driver, I was so happy, y'all, so happy. And the crazy thing about it is Lyft had gave me a female driver and then Lyft switched it and gave me another female driver because she was closer. Yesterday, um, Lyft gave me a notification saying, okay, your ride is outside. So, you know, I got my things ready, got my bag. I, I went outside. I the, the license plate, the car, the driver, everything matched the picture on Lyft. I want y'all to look at the bruises. Pay attention to the, her bruises of her with the left eye right up in here. It looks like, I ain't gonna lie, it looks like makeup. You know, it's no, not a shiner, you know, like a scar. It just looked like makeup. So, like I said, I'm not, hey, if it happened, hey, young lady, get the help you need. But if you on here lying, like Carly Russell, I mean, they need to come get you. Live everybody else need to come get you. So it's all allegedly that this happened. You know, it just a lot. To take in, but I want y'all just pay attention he to the bruises in my face. Okay, the driver, she had like this accent. I can tell she was foreign. Before we got off exit sixty three, she was on the phone with with some man, and she was like explaining to them what I was wearing. I didn't think too much of it because first she was speaking another language. I don't know what she was speaking on the phone with this man. She the language she was speaking it sounded like it was. She was from the Middle East, or but she said something in English when phone with the man, which is weird because she was speaking another language, and then all of a sudden she started to say, "dark dark skin, red sweater." Well, one thing, one thing that um, that I have noticed about all this is that freaking smoke detector going off. That is the what we call the single lady alarm. That smoke detector. Y'all can't even hear it. You can't hear it. Because if it was a guy around, because it drives me crazy just listening to it on here. But it's just ringing in the background, and she don't hear this thing. So go get, go get that fixed. Please. Please fix that lady. Fix it. God. When she said, she said, no, she said red sweater, dark skin. When she said red sweater, dark skin, I had on a red sweater, and I'm dark skin. So she was describing... Whoever she was on the phone with, she was describing me to that person. I was wearing how I looked, which was weird. I did not, I did not think too much of it because I was about to be to work. I was almost to my destination. But even though I was nervous, I'm like, okay, I'ma just let, I'ma just let God handle the rest. You know, I'm about to be to my destination. I'ma just let her take me to my destination. But we. Got okay, so I didn't stop the video right here. Like it literally just cuts off right here. And then picks back up two months from now. Two months. The video kicks back in with the story. <sighs> but anyway, let's let's continue. Okay, okay, so I'm back to finish the story. I'm so sorry, y'all. I could not finish the video the other 
day. I was not right emotionally. I had a lot on my plate. Everything was the incident happened. That is why my face looks better. But the damage is, is already done. The trauma is still there. Let me finish the story. Okay, so we got off exit 63. The Lyft driver, she had to turn left to get to my destination once you get off exit 63. The Lyft driver had her left turn signals on. Mind you, she had her left turn signals on. So she knew, even she knew she had to turn left. Even the GPS told her she had to turn left. Guess what she did? She ended the ride and got back on the highway. We're almost to my destination. She got back on while I was still in the car. I'm like telling her, ma'am, you passed my destination. What are you doing? This lady did not say nothing. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? She told me to shut up. She didn't have to tell me nothing else. After two months, two, two whole months, two. You still hadn't fixed that doggone smoke detector. It just back there just a beeping and beeping and beeping. Call, get some dude over there, sit for about 10 minutes and let that shit drive him crazy and he'll go get a battery and put in it. That's all you need. I might need to switch them out. But either way, fix that before you fix the story. Just fix that, please. I jumped out that car so fast. I jumped out the car while it was moving. That shit hurt so bad. I thought I was going to die because she was going fast. Like, you know, when somebody's trying to kidnap you. Um, no, no, I don't know what it's like when somebody's trying to kidnap you. Most people, you know, it don't happen to like that. Everybody just getting kidnapped. They try to go fast. They try to like get away with it fast. That's how fast she was going while I was jumping out the car. You know, that day I thought I was never gonna see my mom again. I thought I was never gonna see my dad again. I thought it was it. Like it felt like a movie, y'all. It felt like I was in a movie. Like I keep replaying the scenario in my head. When I jumped out the car, all I can remember is holding my head. I was bleeding out my head. I was bleeding in my other parts of the body, but it was mainly in my, my head and I was holding my head while I was walking to the plaza because I needed to go somewhere where there was a lot of people just in case she tried to come back and you know so I just walked to the plaza it literally took me like 10 seconds I'm not gonna lie this is starting to sound like a bunch of bullshit a bullshit a bullshit a bullshit see one minute you saying that she was going so fast and then the next minute you say you only walked 10 seconds to the plaza, which, which tells me that she was at your destination. And I mean, I don't know about y'all, but in front of plazas, like most time it's this long road, the guy have lights on it. So how fast could she go? And if you're only 10 seconds away from walking to the plaza, you see what I'm saying? Like the story, she trying too hard to make the story real and it just, when you sit and listen to it, it has a lot of holes in it. That's all I'm saying. That's when I called the cop. Mind you, this incident happened a couple days before my birthday. I thought I wasn't going to make it home to spend time with my family for my birthday. Like, I really thought that I was going to die. <laughs> she, I mean, you think about it. She has thought about a lot. A lot to be in a life and death situation. I mean, come on. Most, I mean, I know some of you have never been in that situation. It's like, well, you don't know I, what I do know. I ain't thinking about that. I'm thinking about getting my ass up out of there. That's what I'm thinking. If I need to escape or whatever, I'm not thinking about that. It just, like I said, she's just saying too much. Let's be real. Tell me why, while I was walking to the plaza, it was so many cars out there, nobody stopped for me. Nobody stopped for me. Nobody asked me if I was okay. Luckily, I had the sense to call 911 myself. I'm just wondering why you didn't try to flag a car down and stop him. But then again, you said you only had a 10 second walk to the plaza. So who, who knows what, what, what was going on with you? But either way, once you got free, you should have dialed 911. Why you didn't do that? Talking about somebody else calling. Shit, you better call.
But what if I couldn't call 911? Who gonna call 911 for me? You see what I mean? If I see somebody just jump out of the car, if I see somebody bleeding out their head, crying, walking to the plaza, I'm gonna stop the car and ask them if they're okay. Especially if it's a, if it's a young girl like me. Clearly, I just went through hell. So the fact that none of the cars stopped for me, they was all looking, y'all. When the cops came, the paramedics came. I got in the ambulance and I was transported to Yale New Haven Hospital all the way from Clinton. I didn't even realize I, I was losing my memory until the amb the, guy, the paramedics asked me, asked me what my age was. I couldn't answer. I didn't even know how old I was. That's how bad my memory was functioning. I think it's because I was going through so much trauma. See how old I was, I didn't even know. But then I remembered, wait. He asked me what my birthday was, and I'm like, wait, my birthday's coming up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. June, so I, I said to him, I said, June 25th, 2001. Like, I was so uncertain. Uh, <laughs> oh, so so you have a head trauma, and, and you can't think of anything, but hold up. Wait a minute. I remember my birthday. The month, the day, and the year. Wow. Ain't that something. Like, you tried hard, young lady. Hey, it may have happened, though. It may have happened. So I'm not saying it didn't happen. All I'm saying is the story sounds a little, you know what. Might be another Carly, was it Carly Russell, Carly something, whatever that girl name. I'm just saying. All right, so here she has a post. It says, my medical bills totaled up to 16000 all because of Lyft. Yale Hospital charged me 11000 for all the tests I had to perform the day I was transported to the hospital after I jumped out of the car. My insurance cannot cover everything. I have no choice but to pay out of pocket. I'm afraid they may deny me proper health care simply because I can't pay my medical bills. Okay, now we get into it. Now we get into it. She got to set it all up. Or the GoFundMe. She got to break it down, make it sound dramatic, sad, traumatic, and sad, and more traumatic and sad. Throw a little God in there. Throw a little, ooh, ah, uh, I'm just so. And there it is. I can't pay the bill. She sound like the brick lady now. Remember her? The one that scammed people out of $40,000? But like I said, it could have happened to her. It could have. I just don't know why y'all keep running to go find me every time an incident happened with you guys. It's all of a sudden, your insurances don't pay now. I'm, I'm just, you know, let's continue. Goes on to say, I've been in the hospital back to back because of this situation and even took medical leave from my job. My bruises on my face healed, but my head injury is not improving. In fact, it's worse. I can't sleep at night or lay on a certain part of my head because it hurts. I have four scars total on my body that did not heal, even though it's been over a month. I am still dealing with massive trauma. The medicine the doctor prescribed me does not help. Only thing that keeps me going is God. She put the verse there. It says Joshua 1 9 says, do not be afraid. Do not be struck with terror or fear. Jehovah God is with you wherever you go. See, there it is. Had to drop a little God in on them because they know one of the best ways to, you know, to capitalize on black people is religion. Drop a little God, um, just some Bible verses, a few things, and, and you got them. They all down for, the, for whatever. But she throwing it all in there. Like I said, it might be true. I just don't know why y'all go to go find me. So, allegedly, this could be true. It could have happened. So, I'm not, I'm not gonna strike her out. I'm just gonna let y'all just continue to see and read what she wrote, and and you judge. So, there it is. The go find me. It look, I mean, it's just like the brick lady. She throw the sob story out there, talk about how they can't pay for it, and then they throw the GoFundMe out there, and this lady already received over two thousand dollars. So some suckers out there believing it, but you know, y'all got to be careful with your money because people are scamming out here, and y'all thinking just because of skin color 
and gender, you need to be believing this stuff. People will pray on you. So, this, I mean, it's, it's, it's the norm right now. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying she wrong. I'm just saying this becoming a norm. She the third one right now. So usually I don't do this. Like I'm not drama or nothing like that, but I just can't sit and watch. This came to my spirit. I can't sit and watch somebody scam people that I know is a scammer. This girl, when I was sick in a hospital in ICU, she scammed me for $1,350. And here we go again. It never fails. Every time someone tries to come out and scam people about something, like I always said, someone always know that person. They just know them a little more personal than everyone else. And most likely they didn't did something to them. So that young lady right there to come out to expose that this young lady's a scammer. That's why I keep saying allegedly. So it could have happened, but it doesn't sound like it may have happened. But they always get exposed. Let's hear what else she had to say about it. Proof, messages, everything. She's a scammer. She'll do anything, say anything to get a dollar. She can't say anything. She will do anything. Like she's told me these same stories before and scammed me out of $1,000 to $350. So be very careful with this story that sound so believable. And even if it is me, God bless her. Um, I don't wish bad on nobody. I would never wish death on nobody by the end of the day. She's a known scammer. I'm from New Haven. So she make a fool like, you know, TikTok and social media, but I know her personally and she's known for scamming. Um, plenty of people could back this up. Plenty of people know her. And if y'all go down to my page from like two years or last year, you will see that I have blasted her before scamming. Like this is what she's known for in New Haven. I'm a lot of, she owe a lot of people money in New Haven. So be very careful when you guys are sending your hard earned money. You know, I just be amazed these days how, how some of you young people just loan out so much money to someone. She's over like $1,300 to this girl. Like for what? Y'all just, every time somebody needs something, y'all go pulling out, pulling out money, give it to them. I got a rule. It ain't $25 all you'll get from me. That's it. 25. You don't want that? Because I don't want it to be any higher where I need to be getting pissed off about it. And I definitely hate asking for my money back. But she got this girl over $1,300, but I just don't see it, man. I just don't. To this girl, story may sound sad, story may sound believable. Anybody could come to social media and start crying and saying something happened to them for money. And be saying that she may have made, I don't know. Um, but like I said, it came to my spirit to just to put this out there so people could know. This girl, Drea, is a scammer. She scams. And uh, she owes a lot of us money in New Haven. So you TikTokers, be safe. And be easy when y'all sending this girl money. Because she has a GoFundMe. This is, this is scam. This whole thing screams scam me before this this is a scam um i'm sorry i just can't watch people get scammed out of money people work hard for their money so y'all be careful because i had to learn the hard way y'all have to stop believing everything that y'all seeing here on this internet my problem with this whole story is whether it's true or not there is somebody right now that is actively getting death threats behind the video that this woman chose to make and she has posted all these receipts and has yet to confirm or deny whether this woman who is now being attacked is the actual driver or not now this is crazy this is the driver just the lift driver and i was i was i keep wondering you know, when you when you uh, do the ride share and stuff, you get a, their name, their car make and model, color, and the license plate. Why isn't this girl arrested? Why isn't she arrested? Even when she got stopped, when, when she said she called the police and went to the hospital and all that, she never said they went and arrested her or found her. She never did. So if this is such a, you know, traumatic story where you had to jump out the car and she canceled. You should be able to show that, that she canceled the ride and went the other direction. You can show them where you jumped out the car, all this stuff. 
So why isn't a girl in jail? I just don't get it. Why? Matter of fact, why you wouldn't even recording this stuff inside the car since y'all like to record? But like the woman said, now you got this woman under fire and it may not be true. Just allegedly. Because it's just too much out there. The girl is still out. She's still working for Lyft. She's still working for Lyft. So if y'all see here, this was in 2022. This girl, it's the same girl. That's her name. Can't really tell. But anyway, this is the same girl. Um, we was cool. And she scammed me. As I stated in the last video, so she has a vote for me going around. So I just want y'all to be aware. And I want y'all to see the proof. So this is in 2022. So it's not like I'm just making this up. I would never do that. But yeah, y'all have to be very careful when y'all send it. She did the same thing to me. Crying, moping, sobbing, and it's a lie. She probably made those bruises for makeup. Who knows? I don't know. But what I do know is this. This is... The story don't even add up. It don't even make sense. And I'm not questioning nobody's story. But come on. One plus one always equals two. And this sounds like one plus something else. It ain't adding up. So at the end of the day, I just want y'all to be very careful and just spread this so people can know. People work hard for their money. And I just don't want nobody else to get scammed. Because see, I let the money situation go with me. I leave, I left it to God. But you got to pray for people in their mental health. She's suffering from mental illness. And it's clear and it shows. So this is what y'all can see. So what y'all think? Y'all think that she's telling the truth or she's scamming? Now she got this lady out here seem kind of viable now talking about how she scammed her out some money doing the same type of thing. So we got to kind of look at the picture. Like, is it another brick lady slash Carly Russell situation or what? You know, what are we looking at here? So y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think. And I'm, I'm out of it. I don't think it should happen. I'm be honest. I don't think it happened. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And it's your boy, and I'm up out of here. Y'all be good. Peace.